Welcome back guys. So today we got another rare one we're gonna try to get going. This is, I don't know the year, but it's an 8N Ford with a Funk inline six conversion, flathead six. That was a company out of Kansas and back in the day they, I don't remember if they did the conversion or gave the parts for someone else to do the conversion, but here it is. It doesn't have a flat four anymore. It's got a six cylinder. And I guess all they did was an adapter plate, the radius arms and all this extended it and the sheet metal and you had a six cylinder. So didn't really need this. Don't really know much about it, but I know it's rare. And if we didn't buy it, it was probably gonna get scrapped because it, when it was in line, it looked pretty rough, but it's not rough at all. So I haven't really looked at it. It was another loaded on the trailer, bring it home, mess with it when we have time. And luckily for this one, it's been three days, bought it on a Thursday and it's Sunday afternoon. So this one didn't have to wait so long. What do you want? You want to be in it? So haven't looked at it. All I know is it turns over because I left it in gear loading it on and it builds oil pressure. So we're just going to start here and we'll work our way around and see what we find. So came with this nice vintage 16 inch heavy service golf brand. That'd probably be about 60s. Didn't notice any cracks or anything on the block. No holes. I don't know the year of this tractor. I'm assuming because of the cast pan. From what I read, it's a later model. It looks pretty clean. There's no oil leaks or not a whole lot of built up grease. I'm guessing someone either had it running or tried to get it running at one point. I don't know how successful they were. That's, a, I believe, a 12 valve, 12 volt alternator with a six volt coil. So that's not going to work real well. Here's the ID tag. It's a, it's an industrial engine. It's not an engine out of a car or a pickup to my knowledge. Nobody stole a radiator and it looks pretty good. It's got a new fuel bowl, which we didn't add that. Somehow this made the trip home. It's a really rare funk only part. So losing that would have been bad. And another reason I think it's a later model is that's a four speed gearbox, not a three speed. Someone put a new tire on it at one time. So I don't know if they did it to move it around or if it ran. Yeah, you know, it's got the flat belt PTO, a little bit signs of some leakage at one point, but nothing terrible. The fenders are in fairly decent shape. Like this tractor is all here. I don't know the story on it other than they dumped it off at the consignment sale. And that was that. You can tell by the steering wheel. It sat outside. Like I said, it's got the four speed. It shows 1900 hours, but you know, to be honest with you, I think that's probably accurate. The only gauge that's busted is a temp gauge. Even had the key in it. Another sign that I think it's low hours is these pedals. They're not worn. They're usually worn, you have these little nubs worn smooth off it. And same with the running board, because I've had a couple of these eight ends, and this one doesn't have any of that. I'll get you back down here in a second. So this is part of the funk conversion. It extends it. I think it pushes everything that way. But it's all there. Like I don't know if this was a running tractor that someone was going to restore or I don't know it was a consignment sale it was there and no one no one had any history other than the guy just dropped it off so this tires not so new but it holds there still has a good tread on it I believe this could be an original tire but it's so cracked you can't even tell watch out tiny So yeah, I mean, this thing is 
very complete. This is about the extent of the grease buildup on this engine. You know, I've seen these where they'll have that all up and down the side of the block, and this doesn't. This was covered, but I uncovered it a little bit ago, so don't worry. It didn't have any anything get in it. What are you doing? Dude, stop. Um, big issue we have is we don't have a starter. And I don't want to spend the money on buying the starter if I don't think this thing runs. I mean, it's going to get sold regardless. We'll go over that later. But we'll push start it, pull start it, whatever. But it's just amazing how it looks rough, but it's not. I mean, it's like someone parked it one day next to their barn and then stole some parts and never used it again. And backed into it with the farm truck. So, yeah, that's pretty well it. It's all there. It turns over. We're going to see if we can get this thing to fire off. So since we're going to do this on a budget, and we don't know if it runs. I wouldn't say budget. We're going to do it as cheap as possible because we don't want to put money into it because we don't know if it runs. All right, Tiny? So... We have an old holly that we had laying around from an auction. It's not for this, but the footprint's the same, so that'll work. That's better than just trying to shoot ether or whatever in there to see if it fires. At least this will be half-ass metered. Got a homemade gasket because, again, I didn't feel like running O'Reilly's. 12-volt coil we know is good. Probably change it to a 12-volt condenser. Got some vacuum line that says not fuel rated because I don't want to use my good line. Vice grips, hose clamps, fuel filter, an oak plank that is not going back to its owner, and some starting fluid I found in the mud that I'd run over. So yeah, I guess we'll start with a carburetor and just start working our way around and then we'll get it unloaded, pull it, and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, we're going to start by pulling this out. I can tell you right now, it won't run with that in there. I'll line up my little homemade gasket with the chopped up bolts. I think we're going to mount it this way, so this stuff will be closer to whoever's driving this thing, probably me. So I can maybe control the throttle if I can reach that far. I don't know if that's possible or not. We'll find out. Kind of cut these bolts too short. That's all they are. They were just long bolts I cut. That looks lined up. Yeah, I went ahead and did this stuff off camera because it took me forever of mix and matching and trying to get the right bolts. And no, it's not going to be perfect, but we just want to see if this thing will run. It's not plowing 50 acres or 100 acres. It's going to make a couple laps around the barn, idle a little bit, and then that's about it. We'll put it up for sale and let the next person take it from there. And if, depending how it runs and what we think, we may put a starter in it. You can still get them. They sell them on eBay, but... You know, you want to minimize your losses. You don't want to go put a thousand bucks in parts on something that you never even heard run or seen move or know anything about. I don't want to strip stuff. Call that good. Call that good. So next up would be fuel system. Yeah, it has the fuel bowl, but that fuel bowl's, who knows, 20s, 30s technology. That tank's test still has a little bit of stale fuel in it. I'd rather not risk it, so we'll just put a, a fuel filter on it. 
So that fits that. I'm trying to get what I'm doing on camera. That's such a hard fit. I don't think we need clamps for that side. Not like we're driving this coast to coast. Some people tend to get all angry because when you when you do stuff like this, not realizing that there's a method for it or a reason, and our reason is it's not driving cross country. It's not even going to run for 20 minutes, I don't think. There we go. I mean, it's gravity fed. Not pressure fed, so I'm not real worried about leaks or catching on fire. None of that. I don't know what I'm doing. It's cool that it still has the heat shields. This will be fun. That's way too big of a fitting. But it was convenient. It's what was in the brass drawer. And that's what we're going to go with. I'm shaking the whole camera, aren't I? Let's fix that. There you go. Now you shouldn't get so seasick. go no there we don't go you know what it says it has upper cylinder lubricant maybe that's just enough to get this slid on and yeah I might end up using that in here six to eight to one compression you're not gonna you're not going to hurt anything. That worked. Okay. I'll cap. Well, I don't need to cap that off. This is blocked. Let me get you guys over here. Well, that was a fun ride. So, blue through there, that's blocked off somehow. We have our gates, vacuum line, oh, fuel line. So I guess half of it, because it was in two pieces, I guess that's high, that side's the vacuum. No wonder it was so hard to get on. Got that, got our fuel filter, homemade gasket. I got it where hopefully I can kind of control it. And sorry for the sun, guys. So, well, while we're here, so we don't make a total light show. We'll go ahead and take that off of here. Yeah, there's no need for a starter solenoid if you don't have a starter. All right. It's really hard trying to do this stuff through a camera. That's out of the way. Our choke's not going to work. I'll grab some three in one oil, probably the same vintage as this tractor. Put it in there before I turn it over. So, yeah, I'd say our fuel system's complete. Let's move on to the ignition. So, something I failed to show you guys a little bit ago was. I think that's the only casting I've seen on here that shows that it's an actual funk conversion. Let's figure I'd show you guys that. So anyway, off to the ignition. All right. So I was tracing this red wire and realized it doesn't go anywhere. So we get that out of our way. We'll pop this off. Maybe. There we go. See if we got everything in there. 
Look like new wires. I don't know if I can, you guys can see real well. Mm, doesn't look terrible. It would run. The button looks the worst part. So if we're to get like this, it must have been running. Um, should just pull off. Yep. Oh, look, it looks like it has new points and new condenser. How do they look? To be honest with you, I know the camera's not really picking it up. I think I'll just hit them with some sandpaper anyway. If I can get in there, get them opened. Boy, if you're throwing up by now with my shaky camera, you will be at the end. Okay, well, it looks good. I'm not even going to mess with this. I might clean that button up a little. Maybe that was a mistake. No? We're just going to leave the cap. Either run or it won't. But the guys that made it never thought we'd be using sandpaper like this to work on it. Oh, I'm going to leave it. It might bite me later, but that's okay. I really think it was running beforehand. How does this go on? There we go. It doesn't have a lot of play in it either. So. All right. This may go smooth and it may not. We're gonna see. I'm trying to see if I can get in there. I think people were smaller back then. I don't think I'm going to worry about the vacuum advance. I guess what that is, it goes all the way around to there. We just want to see if it runs. You know, was it parked because it had a rod knock or a head gasket or why did they park this thing? Most people don't park a good running tractor. Yeah, that's just gonna fight me. All right, we'll come back to that. Another thing I wanted to do was unplug this alternator. Let's make, oh, there it goes. Hmm. They have broken pieces now, it's okay. We didn't want, need that alternator anyway. So otherwise the wiring looks like it'll work. We got wiring to our star starter solenoid, which we're not gonna use. We got wire to our coil, which key still turns. So we have ignition. And I'm not seeing is a ground wire. But that wire we took off the solenoid, that goes to the non-existent starter. I'll bolt that somewhere over here, straight to the battery, and it'll complete. I don't know if this is positive or negative ground, but I guess we're going to make it po uh, negative ground today. So, all right, this is going good. Let's get this thing off the trailer, get some gas in it, and then see if we can get her pushed. We'll just swap this off, put a 12 volt alternator unhooked so it'll be out of the equation. And 12 volts for the coil, I think it'll fire up. We're trying it with the condenser that's in there just to see what happens. 
otherwise I want to come apart. There we go. Eventually. I didn't want to lose that. I wish they made stuff this easy to work on these days. I see ads on Facebook for people looking for someone to fix their vintage tractor. And, you know, get it running for them. And in my mind, I always wonder, is like, if you can't, if you can fix one of these modern ones, how can you not fix one of these old ones? Well, that's cool, guys. Bike inner tube. Someone thinks like I think. get you guys to stop rocking it's really windy here there we go so we'll put our I don't know if you can see it our Delco Remy coil we'll get it on I think it went like this I may have to go back to the footage and see I think that's right. All right, finally got it finished. Got that changed out. I put a new coil wire on it. Alternator's disconnected. I'm gonna rig up the ground cable real fast. We'll shove this thing off the trailer and then see if it'll start. All right, I think I got it all. Alternator's unplugged. Got 12 volt coil. We got have my ground hooked up to the oil pan. We got our fuel system over here. It looks a little crooked, but it's all there. Man, I could be an automotive engineer. We don't need hose clamps, we'll just use one size too small. And then throw on a carburetor where you can reach it from the driver's seat. That'd be excellent. But anyway, jokes aside, ready to roll this thing down there. We'll grab the little Kubota and see if we can get this thing to fire to life. All right, I'm going to see this thing, what it does. Weird shift pattern, but whatever. Yeah, go. Just let off it. There you go. Go. Not yet. There we go. Here, Let's give us some gas, and we stopped. All right, take two for the first gear. Oh, it's going. And we stopped. Temp number three. I don't know if we have a spark. We really need more RPM. I 
say you pull it with the pickup. All right, this is try, who knows what try. We got the points and oh, we'll see what happens. They were way out of whack. So when it has new ones, doesn't mean anything. All right. All right, go. Let's see what she does. You need to be in third gear. Okay, there you go. Oh, it's doing something. Let's see. Hit it with some ether. Well, her ether is gone. Wonder if we flooded it. Still nothing. No. All right, go for it. We'll try this again. Ignition on. Now we have spark. Let's give it some gas. Hey, put it in third. Third. We aren't going fast enough. Oh, there we go. I'm getting something. Ooh, it's angry. I think our timing's off now. Right, go faster. Put it in third gear. I don't think you can hear me. We got smoke now. But I don't think we our timing's right. Alright, hang on. Alright, so we twisted the timing back a little. I found a spot for my screwdriver. Let it ride there. That was bad off the intake. Hold on. Off again. Give it a twist. Give it some gas. I think I need to go the other way. No. All right, I'll try this one last time. I think it's got some stuck valves in it. We'll give it some ether. See if we blow ourselves up. Let's see what happens when we hit the timing. Really not doing anything now. Let's 
give her some ether. Right or on? Sorry for the camera angle, guys. Wanting to. Hmm. Yeah, that's about all we get out of this thing. Figure out a way to keep that open. Ah, popped out of gear. Let's try it. I think we have a stuck valve, guys. Well, this is about as much as this thing runs. Hard to tell. Is that choke on? No. It's open? It's open. Oh uh, yeah, guys. Oh no. It'll start to run. Then it'll blow flames out. Like that. Set ourselves on fire. So the timing's dead on. The point gaps are set. Everything's right for this thing to fire. It's got blue spark, everything. So, I don't know, that's be my guess. All right, guys, so that was a fine example of a will it start fail. I figured this thing probably would have started, but I didn't account for the valves, a couple of them being stuck open. And I was in a rush because I wanted to see if it would run, and I didn't go through this like we probably should have. So the way it went is we'd go, we'd do about three laps. We were out here for about an hour. Do about three or four laps, turning it over, trying different things and then we'd gap the points go again it would have a had a spark but wasn't good enough so we'd do a condenser and then like fix my screw up here I put this the six volt coil was right because it has a resistor but when I put the 12 volts in with the resistor it wasn't enough voltage so we wired it straight that was my bad um, we would just do stuff like that and it was like NASCAR couple laps jump off fiddle with it again get back on and go and in the end it was still doing the same pretty well the same stuff and it tells me that you know has a valve stuck open especially the fact that it was just throwing fuel out of the carburetor instead of sucking it in and then at one point there was which is pretty amazing I wish I got it on camera it probably I mean, it was like a ball of flame just right out of the, right out of the ground, like an upside-down atomic bomb. And about two-foot flame out the top of the carb, all at the same time. And then occasionally, you know, this residue would flare up, and you saw that in the video. But anyway, we tried it, we played with it. I'm sure someone probably has a better way of doing it. This is how we did it. I don't want to... If I have time, I have work stacked up and, you know, stuff like that. I do not want to pull the head. But if I do mess with it, I'll pull the plugs and, like they said online, 
get a bent screwdriver and try to push the, the valves down. I don't know if it applies to this engine, but we'll try it. And I also read you can pull these side covers off right here. The guys with the shoebox forwards and all that are talking about having to pull the whole intake off. This being in a tractor and having all this room, it looks like I can squeeze them off of there. But I don't know. If I do it, I'll post a video. If not, we'll just sell it how it sits. And then something else I noticed, which was neat. It has these weights that I guess are really rare. And I don't know if we'll sell them with the tractor, sell them separate, or put them on my tractor since mine's pretty well an identical tractor. Just the Ferguson model and a four-cylinder. And if you guys don't know the history, apparently the TO20 and the 8N were made off the same blueprints. Just one was Ferguson, one was Ford. And in my opinion, the Ferguson is just a better machine. They took this and just added little improvements to it that made it better, but that's just my opinion. Um, so yeah, like I said at the start of the video, this is going to get sold for sure. We don't need it. We don't have the time to restore it. We just saved it from getting crushed, played with it some, and go on to someone that can restore it or part it out and make a bunch of these others run. We don't like to sell the individuals, so it will be auctioned, whether it's Purple Wave, maybe eBay. I don't like using eBay. Bring a trailer, who knows? We'll figure it out. But, you know, we're running a business. We don't have time to play the game with, oh yeah, I'll be there Wednesday, whatever, whatever. In the last second, it's, oh, my wife didn't. My wife didn't let me have it, or I don't have the money, or you never hear from them again, or what do you mean I can't drive it home, you know, or whatever, where when you put it on the auction site, you can sign it, it goes to the sale, you get a check. And the auctioneer can deal with uh, my son's cousin's wife's dogs, hamsters, girlfriend's neighbor, kid, hit the buy button and we don't want it or my wife doesn't have enough money, my wife told me no, it's the wrong color, I can't drive it home, what do you mean? You know, all the typical BS excuses. So we drop it off, consign it, whatever, done deal, get a check, they come get it. Happy to help them load it. So yeah, I sound pretty negative, but trust me, seen it, dealt with it, and I don't want to deal with it anymore. But someone will get a good clean tractor out of this. It's very, very solid. So, yeah, so that's it for this video. Like I said, if I do mess with the valves, we'll video that and try it again, but it just depends on my schedule, guys. So, anyway, appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and check out my other videos, and stay tuned for the next. Thanks.